Welcome to the podcast you've all been waiting for. It's all, all about me this week. Jokes! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Dragon Slaying Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. We were described this week by the side of a football pitch as rough and rustic. Not sure how I feel about that, or perhaps uh, the listener was just describing us personally, Gary. You're definitely rough and rustic today. I do feel um, rough. How are you doing? Do you reckon you're as tired as Gary? That some of you are. I definitely am, after having to keep up with all that social media madness all week. My gosh, Gary, you were exhausting me on that Facebook group. <laughs> Whatever you're Sorry. doing. So grateful to have you here and hope you enjoy the show. Thanks to all our partners and patrons too. A couple more added recently to the ever-growing list. Patrons can now enjoy 15% off at Precision Fuel and Hydration. Tickety-boo, tickety-boo, tickety-boo. But that's not all on no, no. As, as my kids say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain Veal, Outdoor Active, Vila Forte, Silver, Active Root, the Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, Sportshoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles Arm, and Fawnside Farm Cottages. Pop over to Patreon and you will find there some super cool discount codes. Maybe even treat yourself. You may have seen it in some Dragon's Back media Instagram stories. Your very own Summit Crazy red T-shirt is available to buy if it's... It hasn't sold out, Gary. Guaranteed sellout. It matched your face on many, many occasions. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't got so much sunburn. Trish and I were just chatting yesterday, like, how the hell are we not completely so burned? Fast. You're moving so fast. The sun does That's not. exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. I use my Patreon Tiki Boo 15% discount code on my wife's birthday last week. So she received. Are you a... actually a Patreon, Gary? Because I don't think your name is on the list. So that it's was actually. List, is it? Abuse, <laughs> abuse my position. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode 38, the one where I slayed the dragon. And I think it's only correct that we dedicate this episode to my good friend and my one-man media team <laughs> who kept you all up to date with my goings-on over the week. Chris Lines, what a job Chris did. You know, he knew when to leave me alone and when to ask a question. Hey, a couple of people asked if he was a doctor because his bedside manner <laughs> was so gross. <laughs> He could have got me, I think, day five. That was nailed on tears if he probed a bit more. He um, did. He... I was like, do it, Chris. Go on. This is where we get this stuff. Keep on going. I felt pretty raw at the end of day five. And also my wife, too. I miss Lisa's birthday while I was uh, having lots of fun down in Wales. So I'm very sorry, Lisa. But yeah, we'd like to dedicate this episode to Chris and Lisa. Shout out to our show sponsors, Om. The Om's Festival does look ace. And my Om jacket. I did have a lot of anxiety with the old uh, Kitchek Dragon's Back race. But yeah, my Om insulated jacket sailed through Kitchek and got a little bit of nod of approval from some of the marshals there. So Respect. Oh, like... A little respect. <laughs> this guy knows what he's thinking. Did you actually wear it? I was worried if I took it out of the bag, it might not go go in the bag for the back for the Kitchek the next day. So didn't you Use it that much, but I did have the Om sleeping bag too. It's the Mountain Raid 160, and that kept me cozy all night because you go to bed quite initially, it'd be quite hot, so you'd have nothing on. But then in the middle of the night, you'd be thinking, Oh my goodness, me, I'm pretty chilly now. So that worked a treat. And also, Re Om is trying to ensure that no Om products ever enter landfill. Don't forget, Patreons get 15% over at www.theom.com. Yeah, thanks, Om. Really appreciate the support with the kit for the Dragon's Back Race. Also super stoked that we have Precision Fuel and Hydration as a show sponsor. Now, my Dragon's Back personalised fuel and hydration plan was awesome. I jumped on a video call with sports scientist Emily. Robin Cassidy, lady winner too. She had a video call with Emily. Yeah, I'll talk to Emily. You know, it was free, 20-minute chat, and there was no hard sell. But obviously, when they're prescribing the method for the race it is based around precision fuel and hydration products and now again i puked my way around the lake 100 i didn't puke once in the dragon's back race i didn't have any nausea i did gag on a few paracetamols but apart from that no drama so yeah double big thumbs up patrons get 15 percent off and anyone can get 15 percent off their first order with the code t and trails 15 all caps for the text that is t and trails 15 you can find the links for all our sponsors at tandtrails.com or in the show notes thanks again precision 
dehydration for helping me with the knowledge and the products. I think the strategy worked perfectly in the heat. Sometimes, yeah, you just don't want to eat and to get that electrolyte balance right. Yeah, again, that heat tested, tested it to the max. Well, I'm going to indulge you all this week with my Welsh shenanigans. But before that, Eddie... What's your week been like? I'd spent five hours a day on my phone tracking you. Your your screen time is up 45. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, I got quite obsessed with tracking you and waiting for the next update wherever it came from. So yes, we are one day out for me from uh, Tot Drep 130. Though I've downloaded the GPX and it's 140. They've already lied to me Ooh. about the distance. I won't tell Brent. I've just un- uploaded the GPX on his watch and said, all he wants to know is what height he's at. I'm like, so what do you want to show on your screen? And he's like, I just want to know what elevation it is. Not even elevation climbed. He just wants to know his altitude so that he knows how much further up. I appreciated. Oh, I changed the data screen for the Dragon's Back Race. I had the elevation profile. So I can just I love see. That. I love that. I love that. I always use. Because you can really see how far up you are. <laughs> like really yeah. sad. <laughs> so, yes, I've had a sort of taper week, sort of a not taper week. It's really weird because the race starts on Tuesday night. So last week it didn't feel like I needed a taper week because I was like, you know, you'll just do your normal taper week if a race is on a Saturday or Sunday. But if yeah. it's on a Tuesday, what what you do? What do you do, man? So I just kept running a bit and thought that's all right. Not very much at all. Not very much at all. But a busy week, all the kids back to school, back to new schools, back to uh, colleges. Oh, that's, oh, that's all, the, all the nervous anxiety, just mother being nervous anxiety. Have you got that book? I told you to pack that book. We've had a few, um, mommy, I haven't got my book from the bus and emergency drives down oh, to catch wow. the bus. With the, I, first week, you can, you know, you can forget stuff, you can, but after that, I'm hardcore. I'm like, no, if if you forget it, don't you go ringing me because I'm not coming down in my pajamas again to wait at the gates. Classic, classy look. <laughs> yeah, stuff love that. Uh, so they're all back, they're all fine. But gosh, always, and everyone will relate to this September, getting back into a routine, getting up, oh, getting up and at them is hard. I try to, oh, I try to be kind to my future self. This is where it all stemmed from unpacking the dishwasher, getting everything ready for the next morning. But as the week progresses, it gets more and more lax until I come down and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I've got so much to do before I even wake them up. Anyway, uh, we're also everyone's back in back into that sort of routine, but just trying to get ready because we're going away for we don't actually know how long we're going to be. So we've got this nice driver that we've paid extortionate amount of money who's going to drop us in Cormier. Initially, we were going to have to leave eight hours because the Mont Blanc tunnel was shut, but they've now not shut it. So we can drive through it. But because okay. all the other roads are shut around it because of landslides, it's still going to take us freaking hours to get to Cormier, oh. even though it's it's only 40k away from here. So we've got this nice guy that's driving us. Well, he's nice and paying him at his day's salary, who's going to drive us there and then he's going to track us. I hope he's a keen runner, otherwise, this is good. Well, it could be could definitely be a new podcast. Could be a disaster. Shout out to him. I'll say the content. Take the episode. <laughs> so um, and then he's gonna track us because we don't know when we're gonna finish. Um, and we don't want the pre- I don't want Bryn to be like, I've got to finish, but we have got to try and be back to, to pick up the kids Thursday after school. So sorting all the stuff out because we're leaving, yeah, leaving them for two, three days. All their activities and everything. It's a lot for, for poor Eddie. Anyway, I've kind of Everyone's got their own cafe or bag, own um, shopping bag. I just bought big shopping bags. I've written their names on marker pen and gone through layered each day. So they just work down the layers, a toothbrush in a plastic bag and a toothpaste. That's how far, and a towel. That's how far hygiene is going. And I'm just going to say, look, just, there's the bag. Everything's in it. Just bring the bag back. I don't mind. All laundry. Just make sure you and the bag come back. This sounds like my dragon's back race. Your week declining in plastic bags with toothbrushes in it. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> my week was like. Toothbrush for top dread. I saw Bryn had packed his, so I was like, we can just share that, but maybe we don't want to share a toothbrush after 15 hours in the mountains. Yeah. Gagging. Anyway, uh, yeah, good good little taper week. Uh, I couldn't resist beginning of the week. I did 90 minutes with a sort of a hill that I'd normally hike up because I had quite fresh legs. I ran up it thinking should I be doing this? But I loved it. It felt good. And then I smashed the downhill uh, on the way down a couple of miles, quite steep, just to, just to give the quads a bit of a 
little bit of doms a week before just to go you know what's coming then just lots of easy jogging around with the dog still managed almost seven thousand feet of climbing in my taper week goodness but, me eddie i know but 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 this is just like my clients but eddie but 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 uh i looked back last night and i've done like regularly done between 25 and nineteen thousand feet of climbing like over the summer every week okay and then, to, then I've gone down to 14,000, and then last week was 17,000. So if you're not looking at the hours, the actual yeah. taper is about the right percentage. And it didn't I, – I only ran for five hours, four hours, four and a half hours last week. So no, yeah. no, nothing. It's all fine. fine. Uh, so, yeah, it's all fine. And poor Rebrin is very anxious, having all those ang- – he's next to me in bed, like, waking up. <laughs> Uh, very nervous. So I'm trying to just do the um, do the say it cool. I'm the cool one. We've had the chat. We did our last. We did a little prep run together. And I was like, you don't say to me, you can leave me. Don't say it because I'm not going to do it, and it'll annoy me. We start together. I said the only thing you have to do is take a selfie on top of each mountain because there's seven big climbs. I'm like, okay. think of the gram, Bryn. <laughs> He's like, what the. <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or no money you get to. <laughs> oh, I know. I was like, I bet we'll get he's like anyway. I said, don't say that. We're in it together. We are I had a few moments last week when I was like, it's a bit of a different build-up because I'm not racing. Yeah. And but then I I'm like, oh, but I love that. Like race. I love, love the racing. <laughs> But it's not my time. And it's been so lovely to train together, to talk about it, to see him like try or which he would selfishly, he would never do because his role in our family life is he has a big job that brings brings in the money that enables us to live here. And so he works all the hours God sent. He has a job that is very reactive. So if something happens, he has he is then on call for weekends, overnight. He always has to have his phone. You know, it's a non-turn-off sort of job. And so for him to have this folk, and he wouldn't have done it, even if I bought it, I think just for him, he'd have gone, if I bought it and not done it with him, I think he would have gone, it's too much. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. because. So I think the fact we are doing it together and it's such a privilege because... We met, and this was what we used to love to do, you know, together before the kids, the hiking up the mountains, being outside together was what, you know, was a common ground of interest. And that's why we live here with the kids. Yeah. And so to be able to do this now together is such a, pr- we won't be able to, we won't, I'm never doing this again, the admin. <laughs> yeah, four bars, four bars, four bars again. But to get to do that, to, you know, to we're going to share some pretty low moments, both of us. And some highs, and some highs. Like we're going to ho- hopefully if the weather is not what it says it's going to be. We're going to have some amazing times that to be able to share with your life, your life partner is a privilege. So yeah, can't wait. And of course- You are spot on about the work though. I've got some friends who have no compromise jobs. I'm pretty free to do what I want around the family. Yeah, I've got friends who just can't do that. They work shifts. They've got pretty important jobs, keeping people safe at night. Um, We're and so lucky just can't in our jobs. Off. You know, if I could, I all my clients are super like, they get it. And if I'm like, I'm really sorry, I can't. I've got to go and do the kids. Thing. Can we move the call? Can we? They all, We. I always have that bit of flexibility that I know I have. If you have a job that is full on and you have to, you know, this sort of commitment takes so much commitment. You know, it gets home at seven, seven, eight o'clock and has to go out trading oh. that much more hardcore than us can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it once we get on our way and through that Mont Blanc tunnel. Apparently there were 15 hour queues the other day, so let's just rave ready tomorrow. <laughs> once you're in the tunnel or you're not queuing in the t- tunnel too, are you moving? That would stress me out. It's been... No, I think we are, but I'm taking my AirPods and my eye mask and hopefully just we'll pretend it's not happening. Good luck. Fingers crossed, Eddie. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I don't want to spoil the this week's guest interview, so we'll save my update. You don't want to be like the Rugby World Cup advert that keeps coming up again and again, and you're like, oh, I've already seen this 20 times already. Just get on with the game. <laughs> I've looked at the script too. This could be quite a long chat we have, actually, Eddie. So, yeah. Right. Fine one, two hours, 27 minutes. People <laughs> love it. People listen to it again and again, so let's do it. But we'll move straight on to Brew with the Coaches, and it was such a treat, actually, to see our two coaches in the flesh over the week. What a lovely surprise to see Russell out on course and obviously be 10 buddies with Trish too. To Trish intimately, no doubt, many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. She's got a story to tell uh, for her Dragon's Back race. Um, but yeah, this week's question comes from listener Pete Denston.
This week's Brew the Coaches question comes from Pete Denston. Since we are in the lovely British summer, what are the best methods to manage body temperature when it is heavy rain and waterproofs are on? I find that I get just as wet inside my waterproofs through sweat rather than rain. This leads to me getting cold when I stop moving at checkpoints and I can take a long time to warm up again. Has anyone got any tips on how to manage this? Hi, Pete. Yes, I totally relate. And I have this problem all the time up here in Snowdonia. I live in Blind Epstiniog, third rainiest town in Europe or something like that. A lot of rain. Wow. Um, and, is that reflected in the past prices? <laughs> yeah, definitely is. I've got a leaking roof right now. Oh, yo, yo, yo. yeah. <laughs> anyway. You're a builder, so, Russell. You, you've got, you should be able to fix your roof, surely. Oh, my God. We're going to tear down the ceiling. And put, oh, it's going to be a nightmare. That's, that's a training block in there, fix a roof. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a can of worms. I'll probably make it worse. But I'm not looking forward to that. But, <laughs> yes, to the question, um, we have to deal with, I have to deal with that all the time. It's hard for runners. I think that's the first thing to understand because we're working so much harder than cyclists, than cross-country skiers, than rowers. We're taking the full impact of our body on every step. So we get warm when we're moving and then we get really cold when we stop. And that differential tends to be larger for a runner than for other endurance sports. So understanding that, um, we're all going through that. The thing that I've practiced, and it is something that is a skill that can be learned, is I always move through checkpoints I just can't stay still. It just doesn't seem to work. I think if you are going to stay still, then you're going to need to get a layer on ASAP, even when you don't feel like you need it. Even like a foil um, thing can really help just keep in some of the body heat and stop it escaping. But that's something I would definitely recommend practicing. And it's also going to save you time in a race environment. Learning to do everything on the move, even if you can't run, just walking is going to keep your body temperature, your core temperature higher. And it's almost nothing you can't do. Um, while while walking, you know, eating, drinking, map reading, everything. I, I, I do all of that while I'm walking now. If that's not viable, um, the other big one for me is I've got like a really good quality waterproof jacket that is, you know, almost fail-proof. Nothing is completely fail-proof. And I have that in the, um, you know, the elastic section that you get on the back of good backpacks. So mine is Ultimate Direction, I'm not sponsored by them, but it's really well made. So it's really intuitive and I can just pull it out and I put the whole thing over my rucksack, over everything. And then I, and I use that in like emergency scenarios where I feel like I'm cooling down. The other one is sometimes long downhills. I can get really cold on those. You just can't keep the um, effort level up enough to stay warm. So I'll just know how to pull it out and then pull it over my body really fast. And that's a skill that I've learned over time, you know, whereas it used to be a massive faff and I'd have to stop and toggle with things. And now I can do it like almost autopilot. And these are skills you just have to learn is how to adjust your clothing quickly and how to stay moving through those checkpoints as quickly as you can. So that, that's the best I've got for you. I know some people size up their waterproofs, don't they? Because just purely, otherwise, if they're putting it under a jack, under a vest, it takes them ages for the admin. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Maybe I know it flaps around in the wind, and if you can afford it, maybe two waterproofs. Or if you're looking for a new waterproof, then maybe yeah, buy a, a, a size or two up just so it can go straight over your backpack. I've seen people do that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've done that as well. Yeah, mine's a bit big, but then actually in the winter, uh, it fits me just just right. <laughs> <laughs> Trish is going to have some good things because she and I are the coldest people on earth. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like a shrew. The moment the wind blows, I'm like, ah, I'm dying. Hypothermia. So I would say just, again, looking at what type of run you're doing as well. So if it's going to be a rough day in the mountains, I would I would always say um, go for a, a, a heavier jacket. For example, if it's going to be a really, really wet day in the, ja- in the, in the mountains, the reality is you're probably going to get wet. So you want to be concentrating more on your, your layering and making sure that you've got the layers to layer up if you need. Like as Gary was saying, you know, if you stop, for example, getting ki- warm kit on very quickly over that, the type of jacket you take for the rain does make a difference. I've got a, a thin Innovate jacket that weighs absolutely nothing. And I'd run around, uh, you know, for a few hours potentially in that, but I wouldn't take it out on a mountain day because it's just not going to 
it's not going to be enough. So look at the weather conditions and look at the type of jacket in terms of you it might be a bit heavier, but that heaviness is going to help in terms of taking the wind chill out and stuff like that. Uh, the next thing is wh what you're wearing underneath your jacket. So if you're, you're going to sweat a lot, you might just be better off wearing a t-shirt and having that just that under your jacket, uh, you know, and with your with a jacket with pit zips, and then you can open the front uh, and run with it like that as well. That's often uh, works quite well for me if I think it's it just keeps the rain off, but actually you're still getting the air in in as well because you've just got that t-shirt on, so it's easier to regulate. Um, but the the key thing I would say is it, it, the reality is if you're running in the rain, you are you are just going to get wet. So I, the most important one for me is to layer, use appropriate layering so that you stay you stay warm, and don't stop at checkpoints long enough to get cold. You want to be in and out of checkpoints. Biggest that's once you sit down or get you know get sucked into a checkpoint, that's it. And you get cold, you get you seize up. So keep moving through the checkpoints, no more than a minute in the checkpoint. Fill up on your way. Think about your extremities as well. I prefer in the summertime to not to actually just have short, keep shorts on and we'll just have wet legs and keep the chest, keep the heart warm. But think about like having a buff you can put over your head around your ears so when it's cold and when you get hotter you can just pull it down same with your hands keep your hands warm so a lightweight glove might help as well and you can take that on and off as well i love the idea of the layering if you are getting very cold when you're stopping at checkpoints and it's taking a long time to warm up i would say as well it sounds a little bit like you're under fueled because the body's trying to generate the heat as well as you're moving if you're getting that cold um, and then it's taking you a long time i would say stoke the furnace a little bit more so you might think you need less fuel because it's summertime and blah, 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 blah. you need more fuel to keep yourself warm so up your calories a little bit as well um, and that might help as well just raise that core temperature if you're sweating a lot as well get those electrolytes in it's uncomfortable you're going to be a little bit those waterproof sweating raining embrace it it's all part of the running experience but loads of good tips there for you pete oh, and just everybody one, one more for me I, another one yeah i know <laughs> i find that uh, so i tend to wear a lot of uh long sleeve merino tops when it's uh wet and i find they're really good for keeping you warm even when wet mm. so they they work great for me i think they're they might work for you, but jet, but uh, that works really well for me in, in the winter or just in, in when it's absolutely tipping it down with rain. I can get wet, but stay warm. Yeah, anything like that, so that will keep warm in the rain. I've been known to wear my mountain prism gloves in the, in the summer if it's, if it's wet yeah. because my little hands will absolutely f freeze. Yeah, like yeah, the, the merino. Get into your snacks and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good shout for the merino wool. That's a good shout. Good luck, Pete. Good luck, Pete. So yeah, it takes away. Just have a good shower afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your question, Pete. And yeah, if you've got a question for our coaches, please send them into hello at T and Trails. We'll be sitting down with the coaches again soon. I love when we do them and then we've had quite a couple, we've had a little flurry, the people that have asked a question and then have let us know how it's gone on Facebook. The full circle. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that we all wish lived next door to lend us some pliers and some sugar, maybe. <laughs> uh, some nice. WD. The story in that next podcast. Yeah. <laughs> He's done. He's finished. He not only finished, he finished in style and amazing. I think the picture, the last picture that Chris took with you oh. standing <laughs> with, uh, with your mouth wide open, your eyes raised to the Lord, uh, <laughs> saying, thank goodness that it's goodness. over. Thank goodness it's over. He's back. He didn't want to uh, podcast fans out there. We I've had to bribe him. Oh, heavy flex with the mug. <laughs> I've had to bribe him. We've had a we've had a tight turnaround. We are only on Monday and he finished on Saturday. So things are very raw. He's very tired. He's standing up at his desk. I've told him to sit down, but he can't be bothered to change it. So, uh, but I said, you know, Gary, I did it after the spine. And so you got to do yes, it. Yes, you did tell me that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Eddie, as always, so sympathetic. But no, we would have waited a few more days, wouldn't we? But I'm off tomorrow, so we've, we're, we're putting it in. So this will be raw. You are tired. But that's the beauty. And this is often the best bit of um, 90 minutes you guys will ever have heard when you've just come, you're just coming down. So you're still processing it as well. So we'll just run with this. Let the emotions flow. Uh, the highs, the lows. You're gonna cry, but we'll just. Uh, I'm Do just gonna wonder, look... wonder how long it'll take. If you yeah, we'll get... <laughs> Guys, yeah, let's say some <laughs> podcast bingo. Right, give us the total stats on dragons back then. What did you What did you come out with at the end, apart from terrible chaffing? <laughs> <laughs> well, can I take the opportunity first of all? I don't want to get through this whole chat and forget to thank Shane, Shane, and the whole Ori team. I will be forever grateful and I'd kick myself if I didn't say thank you for a wonderful, a wonderful week and a wonderful adventure. That's exactly what it was. It was a hundred percent perfect. Even though I'm in a lot of pain, I wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing. But yeah, the stats, the stats, six days starting it. I pronounce it Conway, but I think it's Conway. Is that Correct. No, and don't. Oh, my dad will be listening now and be absolutely appalled. <laughs> well, yeah. <I've, laughs> apologies for anybody. I offend. Yeah, six days, 389 kilometers, and 17,856 meters. Castle to castle. I love the symbolism of that. And I think 300 people start, and I think there was about 18 women finished and 70 men finished. So, yeah, that course the duration and the sunshine took its toll on quite a lot of people really really tough uh week out on the trails and the mountains and the fells before we start if you haven't and you can uh you're not you're not four miles from home already head over to facebook over on the tea and trials page if you want to catch up and see the videos and pictures or perhaps afterwards uh chris lines now let's just <laughs> How do we how do we know Chris? Where does Chris fit into this? Because we had a little chat just before and I said, look, if you can record a little bit every day, my thoughts were actually that we would then save it and you so you'd have some memory knowing what you're like uh, or to put it onto the podcast. So I said, maybe just record some voice notes or something of what the day was like. Then when you had the better idea of Chris actually doing it day by day, uh, you knew this guy before, or you? I just... think it was Chris's idea. It wasn't, it wasn't my idea. Uh, but yeah, I run with Chris for Century of Harriers. That's how I know Chris. So I've known Chris for over a decade now, and yeah, super privileged to consider Chris as a friend and very mindful. Yeah, I did want to share the journey with our community, but after day one, yeah, I just don't think I could have done it at all, or definitely not as good as what Chris did. So yeah, I'll be. I am super grateful for his efforts. And he just said, I think I mentioned earlier in the show, he knew when to press and when to back off. And it's he... when he goes, so it's 70K today and you you go, you'd been like obviously lying to yourself that it was just, you know, or just going, it's just a long day. And you were like, yeah, right. Yeah, yes. Okay, and he went, so 70, he said it again and he, you obviously in your head. Were just... <laughs> well, I work in miles, so K's really uh, throw me. And what I found was strange, actually, yeah, everybody was working in K's all week. It was, uh, I was one of a few people who was working in miles. But yeah, Stick super... with what you know, Gary. Stick with what you know. None of this new oh, fangled <laughs> metrics. <laughs> Don't change anything. But I'm super grateful because I know trying to slowly catch up with the uh, Facebook page that our community really enjoyed. A bit of behind the scenes, you know, I don't think many people um, get to see that. A bit of camp life, a bit out on the trails. So, yeah, I really think they appreciate it. So thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll be forever grateful for that. Before we start the actual week, how are you feeling today? How is the body the mind. Mind is, mind is fried. It's fried, isn't it? Okay. We're super but tired. You know, we, so we finished, we, we stayed for the presentation after the, after I finished and then that's a relatively late night Then walked. So that was a good idea. Booking a cheap Premier Inn in Cardiff until it was about a mile walk back to the Premier Inn. It oh was horrendous. <laughs> I know we kept seeing all these other Premier Inns that are a lot closer on the way home. But we did it. <laughs> and then I had to walk back into town the next day because we all met up for a, a, a tent, a tent mate's breakfast. Uh, so apart from that, yeah, super tight. But I'm quite smug from the shins up. 
I feel I'm exhausted. I'm like literally deeply exhausted. I'm still tired from the Lakeland 100. I'm not going to take anything away from that is only now six weeks away. Super tight from that. But yeah, from the shins down, not so pretty, not so pretty down there. It's really, really stiff, got no mobility, lots of, lots of swollen a bit bits like having bones. a baby, you know, <laughs> yeah. just don't go down there for a few weeks. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm not going to mourn too much because I saw people do a major triage on did one and did two. And I had like, a bit of KT tape here and there on a blister. I had a little. Was it soreness. just because you felt like everyone else had it on? So you were like, oh, I'll just put this on. Well, my damage happened <clears throat> basically, probably getting a bit of a head of myself, but my damage happened because my my innovate shoes, although they were fantastic, they were comfortable, they started to split. And then debris was getting into the shoe. And that was really just bothering me. So I thought, I need to get these off and put the hawkers on. The hawkers are such a snug fit, um, and they just crushed my sw- already swollen feet. I oh, did try to put them on mid race. I think oh. one day I tried to put them on, I just couldn't get my feet in them. So I thought, well, I'll try. And they went in, but it was pretty painful every step. But again, I don't want to tell Trisha's story. What was going on with my feet? I couldn't even compare to what Trisha was going through, and many, many other. Literally, I see these people on the bean bags in the in the kind of communal tent, the dining area, the information point, and in some intricate and very creative T tip procedure going on. And I, I can't believe that they actually made it t- t- to the end of the race because I don't think I could race and run today how beaten up I feel. Yeah, but it's all coming out now. It's because you've stopped. You just, yeah. you, I think that's you it. Maybe you're, when your adrenaline kind of oh, dies down. Sure. <laughs> For sure. So we see, we saw a lot of it. We see a lot of the media with all these things like UTMB, the spine. People often sign up because of what they see on the gram or uh, what they see from other people as photos or experience. Was it what you expected? Sort of like if you knew what you knew now afterwards, would you, yeah, was it what you said to? Because I slightly felt you were perhaps a little blase when you were talking about <laughs> the cat life and stuff. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't much, uh, apart from when you were physically eating your food, there wasn't much camp life. Everything was, again, I'm kind of probably getting ahead of myself, but what your camp is admin, admin, admin. Um, and if you have a few minutes to relax, that is amazing. But as far as what I expected, yeah, it was the route. You know, the route was brutal. All of, literally, I think it was every mountain you could possibly see. They thought we'll stick that on the <laughs> on the route. The campsites were idyllic in these lovely little valleys next to you know sort of nice water source. And if you, my experience was at least for every day apart from one, it was still daylight. So I could go and enjoy a little dip in the stream. And you know, you have that communal where you're washing your pots and your dinners. So yeah, all of that. I, it's, for me, I enjoy that. So I think it really, it probably over delivered. But yes, you do see all the lovely media. But I think until you're properly immersed in the trenches, you can't properly visualize. You know it's going to hurt. Your nears, your your days will be stunning and long, and your camps will will be and are amazing. But yeah, until you are there, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard. You know, you can't visualize the smell of your big duffel bag after three days of wet clothes. Oh. <laughs> I gave up. I gave up any kind of hygiene apart from brushing my teeth after about three days. Yeah, it was just I noticed quite... that. I was like, oh, you look, the tramp came more and more, and it looked like you were really embracing it by the end. One night, I did notice you were in one t-shirt. I think it was your Valencia marathon one, and you were in it when you had your dinner. And then you wore it the next day, and I was like, "Oh, Gary, things of you." Obviously, well, they have a little, they have a drying room, and I tried to dry clothes in there, and they didn't come out. They didn't really come out dry. No, and then you think, "I can't, cannot be bothered." Cannot. Yeah, be bothered. it was just it was ten minutes, ten minutes yeah. in my evening that I thought, no. So I just, I did make a mistake the last day. I left my beloved red compression shorts outside on the grass and then went oh my god the red shorts need <laughs> their own instagram account because people were asking where were the red shorts where were they it's... they were they were there but um yeah waking up with super wet but that's the first thing you put on is your soaking wet compression shorts that is a knot are they gone then are they gone are they or are they still you haven't lost them no 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 they're still there i wore them monday 
and I wore them Thursday, Friday. Oh, we they were just hidden. We just couldn't see them. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't let I don't fully expose myself. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that got mentioned quite a lot. A lot of fisting comments got mentioned. <laughs> Talking about fully exposure, um, let's best bit best bit of the whole week. Got loads, Eddie. Sorry, I'm gonna have to. It's not just the one best bit. I no, love the community. Let's, let's talk highlights first, and then we'll go. Then because I'm not really that interested in those, <laughs> I just want the terrible bit. <laughs> well, the best bit has to be, I suppose, the physical race itself has to be going up in Cribgock. I was super anxious I was about Cribgock because I watched your little dot, uh, and but it was a beautiful day. I was worried because she would get that full sense of where you were. Would a mm. misty day be better because she'd be oblivious to where you were? But there's a great picture, actually, of John Shield on, on Quibgok. Uh, I, think, I think you made it to the Times. And that whole Snowden horseshoe, actually, is just completely epic. And you'd take a picture and you'd look at it and it'd be like, it's just, there's no point in taking pictures because you just can't do them, do them just justice. But yeah, I got on that ridge. It was super busy. So you never felt isolated. I caught Zuki on Kribgok. That was really uh, great to see Zuki. And we chugged along there together. And what a guy, you know, to talk you uh, through Kribgok. And he was there. With... <laughs> was he chatty or was he a bit oh, focused? Yeah, yeah no, he, was, he, he, he was super cool. Oh, he, was, he was pretty good. There's nothing like having a chatty partner <laughs> when, you, when you've got four points of contact. There were so many tourists. There were so many tourists up there. And again, to get oh. onto Kribgok, it's a mega scramble. I'm not joking. I didn't I didn't really stop and look apart from on Cribgok actually I did stand up and I like took a deep breath and took a few pictures when I was up there and I just soaked it up I loved it I mentioned I said to you I felt tiny and massive all at the same time it was absolutely it was, it was a strange sensation because you realize how just like you know we're, we're here for a, a fleeting moment in time and all this is still there long after I've gone but for that split second I just felt I was rich. I felt like I was top of the I'm world, the and king of the world. yeah. And I faced a, I faced a fear, and that's what this whole thing is—the adventure. Physically, I was relatively confident I could make it to the end. But after day one, this is maybe a bit of a low point, which we'll talk about later. I, after day one, I was like, "Fuck, can I can I do this?" I I took a lot longer than I thought I would on day one, and it was the thought of facing another five days in that insane heat. But yeah, being up on Creed. Gok, if I could only take away one of the, the, the best bits, because I'd faced a fear and I was up there and, and I you're actually, doing it. It's when you're actually yeah. doing it and you're like, oh, I love it. It's relatively late in the day on day one. So it's not like you get it over with. It's building, it's building, it's building the, antici- the anticipation to it and the heat of the heat of the day. Everything's like a pressure cooker. And then you climb a cream gok and you know it's the first, it's not the first time actually, but you see lots of the Aurea team and so, you know, yeah, they're, this, they're taking this pretty serious because if somebody slips here, you know, it is it's super, super dangerous. But yes, yeah, standing on that ridge, I never I never thought for a second I'd be able to do that. And I did it. So I was super, super chuffed with that. But the community, I think I've reinforced that so many times. The 10 buddies, the runners that you share the miles with, the army volunteers, your magic happens when you get a bunch of like-minded people together. One thing that did stand out, come on, do, uh, Grandis, you know, he popped up with his accordion in the food tent, keeping everybody entertained. And en route on the last day, he, he ran maybe four or 500 metres with me on the Taft Trail. He was playing his accordion. I couldn't keep up with him, Eddie. <laughs> 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 and he just had endless, endless positivity. And, you you know, when you meet people like that, you take a little bit away and you just, you, I think you are, you come away a bit of a better person for people like you. It's uh, like almost waiting. when you share like those really high, really low moments with people, they're sort of with you then forever because yeah. they've seen you in like the rawest, purest form of yourself. And you've seen them and you can't, nothing can, nobody, like very few people are privileged enough to see you like that because obviously yeah. you don't, people don't put themselves into that state, but then you share that. You know, like they share that experience and they're there forever. I totally, I totally get that as well. But day two, I think from a running point of view, because I was so stressed after day one about physically being able to do it. Day two again, another 30 plus degrees day. But what helped enormously, we had a real, out of nowhere, we had a real strong wind on the tops. So it 
totally dropped. The t- as soon as you got any kind of elevation, the temperature dropped. We had a bit of bump sliding, which was good, down some of the really <laughs> steep fells. I took a nasty gash out of my leg. It was like literally a dragon. Took it, took a claw, claws, claws to me. Epic scenery. Oh, I'm going to really butcher these names. The, the Mullen Back and uh, the, the Ring of Nature Reserve. Just absolutely stunning places to be. We bumped into Russell on day two. You know, he sent me a message saying he was going to go and find you. Did you know he? Did you just come around the corner and? I do, I do remember he said he was going to try and be on course, and unless I'm, I've dreamt that, but yeah, I didn't know where he would be on course. Um, I didn't see Trisha all on day one, and I thought that would be the tale of of, of the week after that. But then on day two, we spent quite a few miles together, Trisha and I. So that was nice. Um, I bumped into Dougie's Innes. To, to you know, people who've been on the shore, and we, you know, we, we know a bit of them, and it was nice we shared some miles together. I enjoyed that. I found that super lucky to see familiar faces uh, out on the coast, and I got to see. This is where I think my experience is. It's a real privilege because I get to see quite a few listeners out on the course, and there's always somebody to natter with, and then those miles just. Just tick down, you know. You could see somebody; uh, they're just cooling off in a in a in a tarn, and then they say, "Oh, we listen to the podcast," and uh, you know, think about doing the Bob Graham round. It's like, oh wow! And then you just have this; you're just passing passing the the, the the miles. I think it's quite unique that my job is, or part of my job is, what people are really interested in running. So it's quite easy for me to chat. And yeah, I love chatting. I love chatting about the podcast. I love chatting about running and I'm super enthusiastic. Oh, sorry, um, everybody, if, if you didn't actually say that and he just started talking about the podcast to you and you were like, when is he listening to podcasts? But, but it was a real treat, you know, to see Trish and uh, Dougie out on course. And just, um, I know Dougie's week didn't go to plan, but just to be running with someone like Dougie, you know, he's he's done I some know, amazing stuff were, out there. I was thinking there must be something wrong your race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I think he said that day two, he was um, conserved himself for day three, but then, yeah, day three happened again. Just, it was just, there was no rest. There was no respite from all of that heat, but yeah, just full of, full of magic moments. It's really hard to pinpoint the best, but from a runner point of view, day two, stand out uh, because again I was so anxious and I just thought yes I found my, found my I think I found my groove yeah. day two yeah. I ran a bit quicker than I thought how does it compare to the Lake District running because you've done a lot of running there and probably lots of people that are listening are thinking about doing it and like yeah well I've run in Lakeland so I've done Lakeland uh, I've run in the Lake District or so I've done Lakeland 50 or Lakeland 100 well there's nothing like you know stride and edge it is a bit of an edge, but there's nothing quite like Kugok with with yeah. the aggressive climb up to it too. But everything else, if you're familiar with, say, Bob Graham, you might have done races like All County Tops and uh, Teenager with Altitude, some epic miles uh, to elevation ratio. They serve me well, Eddie. I can't, you know, I can only speak for myself. But I did not. You're telling people follow your race schedule. Um, <laughs> you think you're good. Follow the well, I'd I'd recommend anybody to enter all county tops. That's a wonderful, wonderful race. But yeah, I think you know you go to Scarfield Pike, and that's aggressive terrain. At Scarfield Pike, it's really gnarly. And then the descent of Scarfield Pike. If you're in the Bob Graham Round territory, Lodge Rake, that kind of stuff. It's proper scramble. No, but you could train. You could be comfortable over that stuff enough that you don't need to drive down yeah. to Wales. Yeah, Ricky, the route. Before. I don't think so. And yeah. the map they had, the little app they you you download and you download an offline version of the map, which then just they have a little dot which uh, when you turn your GPS on, so you're not you don't need a phone signal for it to work. It was That's awesome, amazing. Because I saw Victoria Thompson, who sadly didn't finish, but was in. Um, with Robin a lot at the front of the pack, and she held had her map in her hand all the time. Oh, I'm super the impressed. Person. So the only person, so presumably she never on a watch. Yeah, she she shot past me quite a few times. I think people did. I I, I remember the I don't remember the guy's name. Apologies. He had a map. He had his thumb in his map, and he did occasionally refer to his watch. But I think he was trying his best to. Do it, Bring it all pure. by Matt. He didn't want it. Yeah, he wanted pure. He didn't want to do it. Maybe yeah. he didn't know how to work his <laughs> so But yeah, personally. But... Nav was all right because you'd not stepped a foot on that trail before. And you yeah, were... Nav was fine. Um, you know, with the hatchling being out on course and the staggered star times, I loved it. There was always somebody. You weren't racing them. You know, you had no idea. To be fair, I had no idea who I was physically racing or not after day one. But having somebody ahead wasn't necessarily a target 
Whatever. But it would just it just made you not second guess. <laughs> it made you not second guess that you were actually on the right. Me, on the... Gary from the podcast coming through. V fifty, V fifty. Can you move over, please? Runner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I generally didn't. I know one of your questions is, um, were you were you racing or or just doing my own thing? Um, I wasn't racing. I'd be, I would be lying if I, to the towards the end of the week, I didn't start casting an eye on the V50 and the V50 rankings. Okay, so we've got some highlights. I love it. I know there's going to be more as we, as we keep on chatting, but any real low points? Any points where you thought, I can I do this? Well, probably, probably well the first low point was uh, i don't know what the hell i was thinking you know i forgot to book accommodation in conway on sunday night i just thought i didn't think actually I completely put my hand up i'm not going to say what anything else thinking? <laughs> when you registered what did you think where did you think you i don't know the, well, the, the penny dropped somebody uh on facebook said their accommodation had fallen through is there a spare bed going on Sunday night, and I was thinking, well, why is, he, why is he not sleeping with everybody else? <laughs> it turns out that nobody has accommodation. <laughs> and then I, th- I think I was just trying to drop off, and I was thinking, what was what was he on about? What brought up the accommodation? And then I reread the uh, what was the, the kind of the, the, what was happening for the event, and it said, yeah, your camp starts on the end of day one. And that was like, shit. And this was, I was like lying to lying in bed, trying to go to sleep. So I had literally zero sleep that night. Thankfully, my tent mate, Nick Watson, lives in Conway. So I sent out a yeah, distress. You did it. <laughs> he did up, you know, it wasn't. You load up. <laughs> no, earlier, we've got, we were super, we've got a WhatsApp group with all our tent mates. And previously in the thread, he'd offered his floor up to uh, people. And you hadn't thought, no, oh, no, nothing. No, no, nothing no. Oh my god! This I is think like, you know the, the, the lake. I was grateful. <laughs> I was grateful for the Lake Hundred as a nice distraction, but I think maybe it did take my eye off some yeah. of the bits yeah. of uh, fine, finer details. So yeah, it was a good test for my airbed and my sleeping system, <laughs> and it was awesome. My goodness me, he lived maybe a five minute walk from the start, and where registration he was doing everything as well. We you we ate at, we ate at camp. We ate at camp. At that oh, time. I see. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you register, uh, and I was pretty stressed out about that because I, I, if if I go to an event normally, I'd have all my kits, the kit list. But then in the boot, I'd have like a Plan B kit. See if something failed, kit check for whatever, and then you can just go back to your car and get it. Because I was getting a lift down, and then traveling back with Lisa, I was mindful that everything. It was a one hit kit check that. Um, if if you failed kit check, then potentially it was I was wasn't physically starting that race. So I was mega anxious. The whole thing was was layer on stress. But anyone, yeah, if anyone is thinking about the Dragon's Back race, I can't say it's going to be like that every year. But they have like an information point, and you can buy your blister packs, you can buy your your bivy bag, bits and bobs. There was Montaigne clothes i'm pretty sure you could Did the credit card come out <laughs> <laughs> well i had to buy i ordered i pre-ordered a blister pack uh, which again was stressing me because i thought well i'm going to tip my bag over the scales now and i saw people i heard people sorry drinking bits of coca-cola so they could then, then <laughs> tighten the bottle up so they could put it in the drip in, in their kit bag so it would come in within the 15 kilos but there is an opportunity yes if you forgot something you might be able to buy it from one of the little pop-up. The Montaigne, Scarp had a store. I'm not too sure if they were selling or they were just loaning people's shoes to test to test out. But yeah, you could, yeah, no, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, super grateful to Nick and his family. But yeah, we played Labyrinth. I love Labyrinth board games. We were playing Labyrinth oh. in the <laughs> And again, just to reinforce what an awesome guy Nick is, he went to the famous chocolate shop in Comedy, which I didn't realise, uh, Baravelli's Chocolate Tears. And they're these little dragons. And he got some. He bought some dragons for us all. When we had a little breakfast on the Sunday, Sunday morning, we had a little kind of tent catch up, and we were presented with some dragons. I think I was the most improved runner in the tent as the week went on. So I won a little dragon. Awesome. <laughs> I don't want to eat it. It's so lovely. I just want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. I'll eat it. But my first probably big low point was there's a youth hostel before you really start the climb up to Cribgok. And that is an official support point where you fill up water. And I should have I should have chilled out there, basically, because as soon as I started to climb out of the valley, 
my heart rate went sky high. I wasn't really applying any pressure. Um, and yeah, I just headed out in the sun. People were going past me. I couldn't respond. And I just thought, I've, I've, literally, I've just got to chill out, Gary. I've got Yeah, I'm cooking. Go. You feel that? You feel like I'm actually cooking now. I have to. Well, I was down. mindful, you know, if you all went over woods and I didn't want to start a train reaction, then that was out of my control. So I deliberately just eased off. But then what I did find is that even though people had gone past me, they didn't completely drift off. So maybe I was applying too much pressure, but I just didn't. It was such slow going the terrain. Um, it wasn't really telling the tale of how much effort I was putting into it. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it relaxed. It relaxed a bit. And then by the time we kind of got got over that first climb, and then it becomes like, it's quite technical underfoot, so you can't really move that fast. And obviously the elevation cooled us down a bit. That was probably the first, first low point. And that was when I was thinking, oh my goodness me, this is six, six days of that. Yeah, I bumped into a, a lovely guy called Rob and we shared quite a few miles over the week. And he drifted off. This, I suppose, this is what made me a bit, a bit annoyed with myself. He drifted off as we were going to Kribgok. But then I'm Kribgok. It shows you people's strengths and weaknesses. I don't think Rob was a fan of Kribgok because I caught him up. Oh, <laughs> <you> but, <watch> <laughs> him? <laughs> but, but I caught up with on the ridge. And but yeah, as soon as we got going again, once we got off it, then he vanished. But that's when I noticed actually that they have this, there's some places which are mandatory mandatory, you have to go that route. And there's some places which are just advisory. So you can if you know the area. And I noticed as you were going to um Snowdonia, Snowden itself, sorry. You could have took quite a nice low path. You know, there's pros and cons to this. Do you think, well, that's not the full dragon experience to go over every ridge? But then you'd see some of these ridges and you'd think, is there a control point on there? Do I go up there? And then you go up there and there's nothing there. And it's like, oh, shit, I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't done that. But I did see a few runners doing such a, a much quicker line going up to Snowden. And I think, wow, that would have been, that would have been about 20, 15, 20 minutes. I think that would have saved me, but... Hey, it's okay. Did you get that moment? Because I know when I've done multi days is the moment in the morning when you're like getting all your stuff together and you've got to eat again and you've got to fill your bottles up and you've got to put your stuff away and you've got a massive day ahead of you and you can almost feel like a bit depressed because you're like, oh my God, we go again, my friends, we go again. Or were you super chipper? You were super chipper, weren't you? You're going to go, Eddie, I was fine. <laughs> no, I wasn't because it was sometimes, you know, if you'd forget to do this is it when you you're, we talk about Amen later. If I'd forget to do something in the evening and then I had to do it in the morning, then I'd be like, oh, this that's another five, ten minutes. That's another that's gonna make me there was sometimes when I'd always plan to get out of the camp at say six thirty. And sometimes we know, it was like, <laughs> we know, we know, and sometimes 20 minutes. <laughs> it was, was 650. I think day five, everyone was telling me how big, big day five was as far as time on feet. So yeah, I think day five, when you get the forecast. And you were just fingers crossed there was something positive to come, like a bit of wind at least. And apart from diff two, it was just hot and but still. Would you have preferred? Can you imagine if it had rained oh, all week? Hundred percent, I'd prefer it to be hot. I couldn't. I could not imagine just being drenched in camp for the whole week. That that and would just be doing anything. Must just be like yeah. That would have been yeah. It would have been. It would have tainted your experience so much if you were just in clag the whole time and I'd have said yeah. how could go and you were like I don't know <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't, see. And couldn't really see I was just holding on real tight I, I definitely think the sun and the heat because you can slow if you're sensible you'll slow down and then you know we'll talk about the checkpoints where they it wasn't a force stop but they stopped the clock so if you didn't so, I don't yeah, really tell see. me how that works because that's the first year they put that into place um, well, basically yeah you so day one there was none of that day two I think we were <laughs> none of that <laughs> day two I think there was only one checkpoint where, so it was like a half an hour bonus so basically you, you ran at the checkpoint Whenever you ran past the, they didn't have a dibber this year. It was like a proximity thing. So your tracker would, when you ran past the little, like this little bag with the with the, with the uh, GPS device in it, it would trigger something. Then you'd enter that checkpoint, and then your clock would start ticking, and they'd minus thirty minutes maximum off your time. So like an idiot, honestly, I don't know why I did it, but for through just faffing and taking my eye off the clock, I'd I think about twenty seven minutes. I'd overspent in the checkpoints. I don't. Surprising. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't need it. You know, I don't, I really don't know what happened. I didn't, I always quite mindful of that. Okay. I've come in at uh, two 30, whatever, be getting my stuff together by say uh, oh, 10 to. 
It just takes you so much longer when you're tired and admin and sorted. Well, not everybody else. I've been looking at everybody else's results. And I, think... <laughs> I was doing fine, Gary. I was giving you a way out. <laughs> so, yeah, then I think the idea, three, four, five, you would then get you, they switched it to two, to two stops. And I really think that was such a, it was such a good idea because my personality, I would not have stopped. I would have gone out in there in the in the heat. I would have topped up, re restocked my food, any little admin that I that I would need to do. That probably would have taken about ten minutes to be honest. But the other twenty minutes where I could just sit on my bum, take some time eating my mini cheddars, whatever it was I was doing. Um, I saw I the mini done... cheddars in your pack. They didn't look <laughs> yeah. easy to me. I was like, oh. I don't know. I scoffed them all. I scoffed. Every... I came back. We just had a bit of chat at our group admin, and I came back with two Bella Forte bars and two packets of. Um, yogurt covered raisins so that is literally i had every ounce of food apart from just a four four bits and bobs that was so good. was there enough water on these days when it was really hot did you get to checkpoints like so dehydrated or how much water were you carrying talk me through i would, the fueling st- I, would st- I would start with well, the fueling was every 30 minutes i would eat something and you did that religiously really i did forget once and wondered why i felt shit and then i over carved the next time drinking wise yeah i felt there was enough water on course apart from oh my goodness what day was it oh forget the day but anyway we're coming down into the support point and there was a real good water source fast moving water and it went on for such a long way and it was quite visible so i was quite i was confident there was no dead livestock 100 meters up the stream and I just think I have to take five minutes there to see I hit hydrated properly. I've never weed blood, so I'm not exactly too sure what it's like. But on day six, after we left the pub, I felt I was hydrated, but obviously not because when I went to the toilet and I exposed myself to a housing estate, <laughs> <laughs> I turned around and I was like, oh my goodness, mate, there's like loads of houses watching me of this way. So I shuffled on down the trail and uh, found somewhere a bit more discreet. And yeah, I was it was red way. It wasn't like blood blood, but it was red way. And I immediately... Yeah, but, but sometimes that's not actual, that cannot be uh, due to dehydration. It can just be like impact of the week can be mm. cause. Okay, some... well, I drank, I literally downed a litre there and then. I took on board a whole new, even though I literally, I just checked the, I just left the checkpoint um, about five minutes late. And I was really, because that was day six and it was the run into Cardiff. So I was like, for God's sake, is it oh this good? So I, uh, yeah, I just downed a litre and I kept needing a wee and it was slowly as things were flushing through, the wee was uh, improving in colour. But yeah, some days I'd be taking, going for a wee and I was quite, Proud, I was like, "Wow, that's a that's a pretty pretty healthy color." Even though I'd been out getting roasted all the time, but any water source, personally, I was stopping. I was putting my hand, hand head in there. My wrists were going in. I was my bucket cap was there, so I was just chucking water in my head. Who would have thought? Just the 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 cold water on a roasting hot body. That the the sensation of that would be one of. I'd have to say probably one of the highlights of the week. I didn't mention it as a highlight because, you know, that's not what um, it should be. But as far as a, like a, a reward for doing something, it was awesome. And even there was times, I think it was on day three, I've talked, I've ta- I think I'm, I'm going to probably talk about it later, but we left support point. I uh, did a video and I think some Eurofighters just came flying over the overhead and we started, which were not big climbs on paper. So in my head, I was thinking, oh, excellent. We've, we've cracked this, but they just seem to go on and on and on. And I had a huge, huge dip, but again, just saw some water. And this is what I love about the podcast because exposed to so many knowledgeable people and I just stopped. I think I must have taken on about probably about 60 grams Plus of carbohydrate, the the precision hydration, you know, the big super duper big packets with the ninety tell us, grams. Tell us what your uh, nutrition was? It was so you were on the media team. At one point, you were so funny, <laughs> and you were obviously like, "Go get my sponsors in," because so, Zoe was like, "So what you had to say?" <laughs> You, she was not interested in that much detail, and you went off. <laughs> and <a bit> so, <laughs> well, we see, you know, we see we're lucky. They have supported us. Um, admin in camp was this. So, yeah, admin in camp would have been. I would start the day always with the fifteen hundred the pH, fifteen hundred precision hydration. I'd take a big, uh, soft flask of that five hundred ml of that. Then I'd eat a normal breakfast. 
I'd have my collagen in my cup of tea. Uh, but you, everything had to be, you know, you had to pack everything. When you, when you were going somewhere, you'd have to make sure you'd have your toothbrush, you'd have your yeah, collagen. I told you, didn't I? I said, yeah. sport spoon around your neck because if you forget yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So Honestly, sad. pillar performance would be with me so I could have a little little couple of scoops of that before before bed. And then again, as I finished the day, that would be straight on with the precision hydration again, but with two, I had a double scoop of the protein, Rebel protein, protein. So that was like whacking in like 40 to 45 grams of protein straight away. That's before I'd eat a meal because I'd want that in me. And I could go down the river, get clean, and then let that kind of digest. I did have my protein shake too close to food once and I couldn't eat all the food so i had to do i had to do that but yeah on on the trail itself it was a mixture of like the the mini cheddars it's like the, the real real food i had a few snickers and these yogurt raisins which in a, on a milder day would have been ace but when you're squeezing a snickers out of a out of a, soft, out of a little packet in the and the yogurt co- covered raisins just become one one kind big of, oh, of God, it, they were horrible they were horrible but the kind of official nutrition would be uh the Vela 40 chews uh had those they were good the Vela 40 bars they were great that they'd actually make me feel like I'd eaten something yeah yeah but I had to eat those tactically because when it was red hot I, I didn't really you didn't have the them. moisture yeah you didn't have the moisture no. so yeah. I think day three when I found that water source I just sat down there too and I, I chomped I think They're one of the Vela 40 snack for like top of a climb I'm going to take a moment yeah. Or bottom of a climb, I'm going to take a moment. I'm a bit hungry. They're, they're not so good when you're moving, but they're amazing for a long day, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, oh, they, were, they, were, they were perfect like that. And like I say, if I would mindfully just go, I'm going to, there's a bit of shade here. There's mm-hmm. a good water source. I'm going to take five minutes. Then I would I would do that. But when I was on the move, it would be the precision hydration chews. They were good. I'd never had those before. So potentially uh, high risk. And I, it just keeps the math simple. They put... 30 grams on the packet or 90 grams on the gels. You just know exactly what you are doing. I'm not trying to crunch numbers in my head. I had the Protein Rebel maple syrup gels. They were yummy too. Active Root Chews. They've got the fiery chews. I enjoyed those. I'm trying to think anything else. Ah, uh, there probably is. But did you stuff just drink electrolyte? Did you drink? 100%. Did you Never. I didn't drink any any calories or carbohydrates at all. Just, just the electrolyte drink. And that was the pH... The 500. It did vary. Some days it was the active root ginger. Uh, I had that in my support bag, but I'd start with the sachets of the um, 500. They said, actually, use the sachets and not the fizzy tablets because they go better in your soft flask. Oh, that's interesting. That well, yeah, that's because they wouldn't, they wouldn't fizz up, I suppose. That was probably what they were trying to say. So I think that was it. It was every 30 minutes. And again, to promote recovery, even if my watch beeped five minutes from camp, I would eat. I would eat again. You're such a champ. You're such a champ. I well, I think, I don't know if it's a champ or boring, but I'm pretty safe. I know that. I can go with either. <laughs> I'd fit you very well. So you arrive at camp every night, and this was something we've talked to guests a lot about before. Grilled them. How do you do camp admin? Talk, talk us through your camp admin, what worked, what didn't work. You, oh, some days are awesome. The first thing they did was, was thrust a nice lolly in your hand there as you sat down. The times you were being interviewed, Chris was like, how was your day? And some really lovely person was waiting with the lolly, trying to give it to you. Obviously, it's starting <laughs> to drip down their hand, but they were too polite to yeah. be like, can you please take a lolly? But yeah, so you get your lolly. And they. I don't know if this little chairs were for, for athletes or, or, or just those guys <laughs> sta- standing who were, who were waiting around for hours for everyone to come in. But yeah, I just wanted a little a few minutes there before I'd move into camp. And then somebody would take you to your tent. But yeah, this is where you need to do everything because if, if you have to go backwards and forwards, so I, if I remembered the perfect scenario would be fill up my two soft flasks so then I could do my precision hydration and my protein shake. Then I would go and uh, try and wash if, if possible. Some of the little streams are beautiful, you know. There was one day four maybe uh, where it was the, the, the pub. Well, it was the pub where Chris shared a video from. <laughs> he kept tempting me down the pub. Some people did go to the pub and I wondered, how could you do that? And then actually get your stuff together to get to bed at night. But yeah, then you do your, you clean yourself, get my compression tights on, a, a warm jacket. Then you'd head over to get your cup of tea, put my collagen in the tea. Didn't have a cup of tea till then. Whoa. I'd have to. <laughs> yeah, only two two cups a day. It was two cups oh, a week. Two yum. cups every day. 
Oh, show her a breaking news headline show comes early today. But you have to make sure of that. This is what was strange because my food bag would also have my phone chargers, my watch chargers, my power bank too. So everything that I needed would just have to move with me. And if you forgot can't understand it can you like how tired you are and like how and it is a little bit of a distance from camp to the tent but like just just you just don't want to and you don't have it's like a it's like a critical 30 minutes basically you've got haven't yeah. you like get that all done and also if you put something in the wrong place there's one day i put i don't remember what cable it was exactly but i put that somewhere it shouldn't have gone and then when i needed to find it next time <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, you're filthy. <laughs> it's always when I just take a drink. <laughs> but a cable. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I couldn't find it. And it's like you're spending 10 minutes trying to find this bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were so sorry, everybody. I don't get out much. Um, I, I did think of you on the last night because I remember like the last few checkpoints in the spine where it's like, oh, I don't care anymore. I'm just putting it all in the bag because next time I open that. It's oh, going definitely, to be a problem. Definitely last day, everything just went in. It went in the bag. But it's so, honestly, it, if anyone's thinking about it, the admin, 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 make sure you've got, you know, yeah, probably all the stuff I was using, like plates were very unhygienic by the end of the week. Lisa informs me there's mold in my bottles. Um, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure what I was drinking <laughs> during the week. But you just, everything that you think you're going to need, because if you forget it, or you can't find it. You're walking back to your tent. And some t- so I think day five, the toilets were a bit further away than normal. I saw a few people having wild wheeze in the... Needs <laughs> <in> the- <laughs> <Need fast. laughs> But yeah, yeah, m- very mindful. If you are thinking about it, just try and visualise. Reach out to me. I'll be quite happy to share whether it's what you do or not. Um what I did at make a Super real Bowl. Gary make a real of your tent admin go but you, you, you day one it, it, it changed because I thought initially day one I'd go in eat straight away I just didn't feel like I wanted to do that I wanted to get clean before it got dark yeah. so yeah. then that changed like so then that's when I did my pH 500 my protein shake went down to the river did that got a bit fresher and then went to the food tent which was always awesome what was your favourite bit of food that was actually the last day in Cardiff they had a like it's a, it's a vegetarian stew with little potato. It's more veggie, the food, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it might be majority vegan, but uh, definitely, definitely uh, vegetarian. Not no meat on site. And I think you know, I pretty. Ten, I'm, 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 <laughs> well, that's why it was good. I think Zoe Murphy reached out and said, "Take pro- if if you if you want to make sure you're getting enough protein, take protein each day." On the on the Saturday, all that protocol just stopped. I didn't do anything afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> and now I feel pretty crap. So I wonder if yeah, all of that stuff. I I think it's important, like two or three, just you like you gotta let it go for two or three days. But now. Like from tomorrow, you start looking after, you know, you start electrolyting yeah. again, protein in, but you can't keep that that level of intensity up with all the, that stuff. No, so, no. Yeah, tell me, about, tell me about the food, breakfast, dinner. Was it enough? I did on the last day, on sorry, on day five, because I got back so late and absolutely completely wrecked. I think that was the day maybe when I've looked back in the social media stuff, that's when I looked a bit... Yeah, Gary smiled his way through the week and he, he struggled a bit. He struggled out there today. But yeah, chips, chips, chips. Everyone talks about the chips. Uh, lots and lots of chips. The meals, I can't remember all the meals. It was definitely a chili. Pretty sure there was a spag ball, a lasagna, curry, and then probably something else. And then the last day in Cardiff, there was the beef, oh no, beef, so vegetable stew with these potatoes, which was probably my favorite meal actually out of all of the meals. Dessert, you can get like a, a rhubarb crumble, apple crumble, some jam roly poly, bread and butter pudding, that kind of stuff. Why only these two cups of tea when you were like eating? Well, I'd have had like four cups during this meal. <laughs> well, that just involved going to a different tent. Because to you had to go make it. You are. Yeah. I oh, know they, they would make it for you, but I had to go and walk somewhere yeah. to do it. So yeah. I'd have lots of water and uh, a, a, a cup of but breakfast. You could have, oh, you could, you could really spoil your cereals, uh, porridge. 
Then you could have a, like a vegetarian cooked breakfast over sausages, beans, hash brown. Oh my goodness me, the hash browns were sensational. Then a big bread roll. You so not to eat breakfast or you like it's fun. Get it. Oh in. my goodness me, no, I smashed it every day. I didn't, all I had was the cooked breakfast, but then there'd always be a sweet, so it could be a muffin or a waffle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day I, I just thought, you know, I'm always going to be chasing calories. So I need to eat this. And it was, it was never, only day one where I, it might drank my protein shake too close to having the meal that I, I just kind of slowly ate my meal. But other than that, no, everything went everything went down. I'm pretty good like that. And I do think also this was this whole with the electrolytes and the carbohydrates kicked them separate. I just think that really, I think that really served me well, actually. But yeah, definitely mm-hmm. the food varied. <clears throat> I think being critical, my least favorite meal was probably day one. The shepherd's pie was a little bit dry. But other than that, I can't criticize. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, it was all sensational. I need plenty. You could go back. You know, I had a couple of servings of lasagna. That was absolutely spectacular. Oh, it's not like it's cool when you be like, I really want more, but I'm really scared of the dinner lady to go back and ask for more. <laughs> Do I don't know. Kids like put their jumpers like on and off and turn their caps like that to front. <laughs> well, yeah, I thought about that because I need a little uh, refresh in the outfit to go back for some seconds. But no, 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 everybody, everybody was fine. I did eat mushrooms, I think. I told you the tale that Sharon Dyson had sent me a message saying don't eat mushrooms, but it was specific, specifically a mushroom omelet. So luckily, the, but there was mushrooms in my in my bolognese, and I ate one. And I absolutely love mushrooms, but I had to pick the rest out. I'm not even superstitious. I don't think about anything like that. But I just thought you could have saved your bacon though. I'm not There's taking bacon. any risks. So anyway, yeah, thanks Sharon for for reaching <laughs> reaching out. But yeah, she she told me afterwards. I said, "Oh gosh, Sharon, I did eat, I did eat a mushroom." She went, "Oh my goodness, the the the, the dream, the vision she had was quite graphic. Both ends. Let me just say that." <laughs> so uh, you you fueled the if you've eaten. You're going back to your tent. How was uh, how was the tent? Any shenanigans? Any goss? What was going down in the tent? Disco, 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 party, party, party. Big box, little box, dancing. <laughs> um, well, so lucky to share the tent with uh, female champ, Robin Cassidy. Oh, that was a treat. That was, were you like, Robin, I love you. Robin, <laughs> wear this buff from. <laughs> <laughs> Stick this buff on, yeah. Well, you know, she, she just she just, she just just made it look easy. You know, she did it with grace. Uh, it was so super impressive. You know, we'd all come back very in stages of rinse. And Robin had done a bit of admin. She, she probably came back. There was a video on one day, very near the end, where you've arrived. She's all changed, washed, and obviously going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> We had a fantastic bunch in our tent and we'd build up a bit of a relationship with a WhatsApp group. You know, some people stayed in the full race. Some people were coming in close to cut off. Some people were like leading the race. So there was lots of different time zones people were operating on, but everybody was super mindful, super courteous, and it all worked. I can't think. I know you want a bit of gossip, Eddie. Uh, <laughs> I can't it's think. Not me. It's your audience. It's one of you. I, I, I can't think of um, anything. I shared, I, for some reason, I'm such a little creature of habit, habit. I zoned in on the far left corner, and that was my spot. I was going to ask you where your spot in the tent was. So <laughs> describe, describe the tent to people who won't know what these big blue tents are Okay, like. so you go in, it's a big, big tent, um, and in the middle is a communal bit, which does get a bit messy, I suppose, as everybody's doing their bits and bobs. People start leaving things outside too, especially with the weather being so nice. And then there is a bank of four people either side. We had four men, four women, so we just kept it pretty simple. I think the ladies undid their central partition, so it was like one block of four, while we had two of twos. And night one, I shared with Nick. And then the rest of the week, it was me and Russell and one night. Yeah, the camp was on a slope, so we could have had a... Going. <laughs> we could have had a bit of spooning going on, Russell and I. <laughs> Is this where the cable comes in? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was awesome. Yeah, no, you know, like I say, everyone was operating different times. But we... And I, I did hear some stuff like, 
uh, when we were out on the trails of the people that I knew, we were chatting away and they were like, oh God, gee, that guy like literally coming in and then chatting away till 11 o'clock at night as if it was five in the evening. So some people maybe not so courteous and uh, aware of their fellow tent mates, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm not going to see any, am I, on the podcast, but no, 100%, it was a wonderful, wonderful tent. Also in the tent, we had Kieran, Emily, Trish, Andrea, and the ladies champ, like I mentioned, Robin Castillo. Yeah, I've asked Robin. And she's happy to come on the show. Oh. We just got to schedule a date that we can record. And everybody, you know, there's some people, I think four of us did do the full dragon, but everybody, I ran with Kieran. Oh God, I forget what day it was. I think it was day three. Super strong runner. Uh, and he is in the Lakeland, oh goodness me, Lakeland 50 or Lakeland 100. So yeah, hopefully we'll go up the lakes and share some miles, some recce, recce days up there. Yeah, too. Super fortunate. I think to have that little WhatsApp group and there was all a connection. They volunteered previously so they had a relationship obviously i've got a little connection with robin and uh, trish too so yeah it was it was it was great it all you were welcomed into the inner circle basically because those guys have you know they know people so you were you were just because you're a nice guy i didn't i didn't feel yeah, like I wasn't part of the team. It was it was so welcoming. It was good. And you'd see them all on the on the route too, to various points. Well, they must have come past you every day and slapped your bum, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, Robin glided past me. Robin's family was out on, on course. It was awesome to get a little boost when uh they saw us Russell Did out on course too. Family at the end as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all had brunch. Well, we saw them in the field afterwards. It was nice, Lisa. Got to meet uh, Trish too. That was good. Yeah, it was just nice, you know, was, all, all of that. We've all been like friends via Zoom calls. It was just really... I kept cool. saying to Bryn, it's really weird seeing Gary's body. <laughs> <laughs> His legs. <laughs> because I know you so, like I know your face. Like you, yeah. you, you know, we stare at each other. Got some hair under you ready? Somewhere. Oh. I know, no, keep it on, I can't bear it. <laughs> um, we know each other like, so I know you, Matt, you know, probably we look at each other more than we look at our husbands and wives during the week because uh, yeah. there's like yeah. three or four hours a week where we're, we're intimately eye contact to, and then when I see you actually like, uh, when I see you actually <laughs> out real life, or and it wasn't even real life, it was just on Facebook. So it was so nice you put all those faces to the names, names to the faces, building our little good. tribe, building the tribe. Uh, yeah. Let's move on, Kit. Let's, let's hope you weren't needing a super glue for any of you. <laughs> Walk through the kit. Kit. Well, I did have a last. Yeah, I did have a last minute chew change. I opted out for my grippy uh, peregrines. And I went for the Innovate G270 Trail Flies. Oh my goodness me, I've definitely seen my Bob Graham in them. I've done multiple, I've done a Bob Graham attempt in them, multiple miles in, in that type of shoe. So I knew they'd serve me well. And I also packed the uh, Hawker Tecton 2s, which maybe wasn't a good shoe on reflection. Had half a size bigger, would it have been a good shoe for those last? Well, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, diss on Hawker. That's probably, I have a problem with Weird. buying. A male <laughs> buying a male size six and a half. So quite often I have to buy a lady six and a half because I could buy them from Hawker Direct, yes, but then I don't get any you don't get any sales really. So if it's say sport shoes, for example, but they wouldn't stock a six and a half usually in a men's shoe. So I end up usually you usually buy an Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, because like that's like your average women, isn't it? Is a six yeah. and, a half, and so. most brands are fine, but Maybe Hawk could they do size up differently for men yeah. and women? Like the trail flies, they are a ladies' trail fly and they're perfectly fine for my feet. So yeah, I'm not down on Hawker for having a narrow shoe. Or even like you see, if if if, if you could afford it, that's one yeah, well, as a tip actually. If you could afford yeah, it, I know. have a half a size bigger for yeah. the for, I'll take yeah. your husband's shoe if you're a woman and you um Yeah, if you've got Simmons. Absolutely killed me the last 24 hours of the spine was that I think I think as well, I think it's your body going, we're almost near the end and your feet. Yeah. Suddenly, and my feet just and I didn't have any foot problems, not a blister, nothing. And then just the last day, my feet swelled, and the pain of the pressure, the pressure of swollen feet. And I was like, if I did it again or anything long, when I go long again, I'm going to take Bryn's Bryn's neck because he's got quite small feet. I'm going to take uh, the next size up. and would, Yeah, definitely. That, that's a good tip, actually, if your partner's got the similar size footwear or if you can afford a half or a full or, size. Or yeah, diff sell. yeah, look out for the sales and then just keep them, yeah. keep them for long. Uh, that's a super good idea, actually. Look, yeah, but check out the sales. Because I suppose, to be honest, in honesty, day five and six, I could have bought anything 
as long as yeah, it's exactly. bigger. It doesn't matter what you're wearing by then because you can't feel your feet <laughs> and you're not moving fast. So grip is like, does it matter? Because I'm actually just basically. I did think I should have, should have took my inner soles out. Uh, maybe just give a little bit more room. Oh, I think that might, that might have caused a bit. Quite a painful day five and six, if I'm honest. And I think that's probably where the damage on my feet occurred because I was pretty smug day one, two, three, four. Like I did have a couple of blisters. Excuse me, but nothing too too bad. But yeah, squeezing my swollen little sausage toes into those walk <laughs> ticked on. But they did feel. I remember leaving camp on day five and six on when you're on that little bit of tarmac before you start climbing. And I was like, wow, this feels great. Oh, so good. <laughs> push back, a little bit of push Yeah. Paul's too. Paul's. I had my I don't remember, I don't know the, the model, but they they got the shark grip. So you what can unclip. What were you wearing on your hands? Oh, they were like they were a lecky product, but they were like more of a glove because How when I went thought behind there, because I don't you... know, it's, there's no thought behind it apart from tried to buy some new ones at the Lakeland Hundred, and they didn't have any, but they had these lecky these gloves. I was like, I wasn't sure what to call them, like murderers gloves, <laughs> butchers gloves, because because they were quite big on your hands, and whenever you were like on the, you were like sort of almost like you know when someone's like and so okay. The end I didn't like wringing your hands about it. And then you would like try and take them off and I'd be like, yeah, you'd be like, oh, 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 little girl. <laughs> but then you they looked a bit hot. Were they not hot? I didn't. No, no, they were weren't a problem. The only thing where they were a bit of a faff at the support point where your drop bag was and I had my sun cream, I had to take them off to put the sun cream on. So there's a little bit of faff with him, but no, no, they were fine. And what I, I did like look like Fagin from Oliver Twist. Well, you got the oh, exactly <laughs> like Fagin. <laughs> <laughs> with my leg gloves. I thought, oh, he's wearing you know you see sky runners and they wear them because they're doing like epic scrambling and so they need yeah. the grip on their hands. Oh no no <laughs> I thought that was so I was like oh he's really taking it was just it was just all they had at the lecky uh stand at uh, the Lake hundred that's that's purely purely it but it was good day because they had more points of contact and never I never, you never got any got hot spots. Before. Yeah, because sometimes I get a hot spot on the old uh, what ball of the hand. Yeah, yeah okay. didn't have any of that. But yeah, hundred percent. So many people after I said I don't think I want to take Paul's, <gasps> even in camp. Sorry, in, in the race uh, registration, Gary, take Paul's. Please take Paul's. I can't even keep count of how many people said take Paul's. So every one of you, thank you so much. Because by the last few days, most people, you guys were using them even on. <laughs> You were tip-tapping in along the concrete with your pole. <laughs> oh, he's blunting the bottom. My of pole technique was horrendous. I look back at it thinking, oh, my God. But, but, but yeah, the reason for that was I, I did fail running. I was running better, and I didn't need the poles. They were changing my uh, gait. But I just wanted to remember, I remember James when he came on the podcast and he gave us some stat about how many tonnes of weight you take off your body over a, a period of time. And it was all about preserving yourself for the next day so so even though yes i probably could have ran faster my gait would have been more efficient i just wanted to take that bit of pressure off the body so yeah, everybody who said take pause yeah big super big thank you and i, I did see people out there not using pause once and i honestly honestly don't know how they did it because it was some of the claims you know you'd you'd, you'd get a good purchase with a pole and you lift launch with your arm like good purchase yeah uh, and i really thought i'm i think i'm i'm pretty well conditioned eddie i i thought after day one i think i'm gonna wake up my arms are gonna be screaming i'm gonna have doms nothing absolutely nothing those what guns Words. guns and the triceps out of this world don't mark eddie do not mark <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let's go on. Uh, it's a hard pivot there, Gary, because we've got twenty minutes left. Yeah, <laughs> you did a you did a heavy combination, and there's been a bit of chat on the Facebook group too, too about like Lakeland Hundred, UTMB. You know, the summer is crammed full of. This is where the good stuff happens. This is where the races happen. People looking at doing back to back. You know. Can I do South Downs Way Hundred and UTMB and CCC? Can I do Lakeland? And you know they're all they're all in two months basically. The race yeah. places that a lot of people want to do, and you did it. You did it. You, you did. Can it. do it. Yeah. You can do it. But I don't advise it. So people that you can yeah. do, it, I don't advise it. Um, so you did the Lakeland Hundred, and then you had six weeks to Dragon's Back. I think it was five weeks from finishing to starting. You yeah. could be right six. I've not really yeah, analysed it, but it's still tired. Yeah. Do you, 
<laughs> do you regret that? Do you wish you'd focused on one? You didn't have much of a choice because if we go back a bit, Lakeland 100 was always there. And then you were offered the opportunity to do Dragon's Back like as an addition. So it was like non, a non, it wasn't an actual like, I'm going to do this double header. You had to make it work, yeah. which you did. Firstly, how did you make it work? And would you advise that? Do you regret it? I mean, I think what we're going to see now is a very tired Gary for a couple of months. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell me, tell me, how did you make it work between the two? I did nothing for maybe two weeks after Lake 100. That was the first thing. Then I jumped on a mini taper. It was good that I, I enjoyed my holiday in the lakes with the family. But after that, I was pretty good. You're going to see a like um, a pretty different Gary nutrition wise going forward for the few weeks. I'm going to enjoy oh, all the food. Oh, it's going to be until I go on the log onto the zoom and I go, Oh, 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 oh Gary, it's time to pause. Oh, on the protein one. But yeah, you can do it. But I think you really have to manage your aspirations. I, I got so lucky to come away with the B50 for both races, completely overachieved. I am competitive. I did want that, if I'm being 100% honest. But Dragon's Back race, well, first of all, I have completely not one regret. No regrets at all about doing them both. That was part of the challenge. I think I mentioned I it very early on. If you go for a double header like that, you've got to be like, you can't regret it because you're going to beat no. yourself up then afterwards. If Dragon's Back, you'd fallen apart and ended up, um, you know, have it, really having to dig deep because you would like the tiredness, you still couldn't regret it because... no. We're doing it, weren't you? Yeah, you're, you're doing it, and uh, you know to win the V50 at 800. Oh, that, you know, it, <laughs> have I mentioned that? <laughs> that that was. Uh, uh, I know I'm only turned 50 uh, this year, but that was a long term goal I had my eye on. So yeah, no regrets. I came Dragon's Back race, no sandbagging. It was an adventure. And I totally, totally got it. It over-delivered in spades. And I went from thinking, it's going to be hard, but with a bit of luck, I could do it. End of day one to thinking, oh my God, how the hell are we going to get through this? To finding my groove and absolutely smashing it. And yeah, I have absolutely... Let me give you quite a lot of confidence that you were fitter, more able, an athlete to go... Yeah, did you know? It, it's really good at Dragon's back registration <laughs> being the fifty late and under champ. Did you take a trophy to show a few people? Is this not on the kit list? Oh, <laughs> should have my t-shirt, t-shirt on my late London. But no, I think there's, there's been a few things that happened this year. We did really good um, all county tops. I'm going to say it. I don't apologize if it sounds like I'm uh, showing off, but a really good hard miles hundred ten relay. That race filled me with so much confidence to run an effort for I know it's only four hours. But this, and, and Rob was reminding me of this loads of times when I've been self doubting myself. You've done this, you've done that, you've done that, you're ready, you're stronger. I can see it. You've mentioned it. You're so much. Yeah, it's all, it's, it, it's all paying off. You know, it's all, all paid off. All that work, all the miles, all the sacrifices. You know, I'm missing time with family at weekends. Um, and that was a lot of the motivation. You know, I miss Lisa's birthday. This, this doing this and, and it just it was never going to stop me the whole the, the only thing that would have stopped me would have someone putting their hand on my shoulder and saying look Gary you couldn't you can't go on something's happened I got timed out or an injury or something was going on outside my control but yeah I was no regrets no regrets at all oh, sorry and, and, oh no love I love you uh, any point when did it switch because you were a little further down my scroll on my open tracking uh, on the first couple of days did uh, the racing snake come out a little bit in the last few days? Were you like thinking, looking at standings, moving a little? Because also the terrain suited you better, would you say, in the closing stages? Or because you were yeah. so tired, did the running not really? Did you yeah, I think before the before the race, I would have said, yeah, day five, day six suited me better. But I was yeah, but you'd be like, I'm going to run hell on those days, and then hell was actually. <laughs> little moment into a check for me. <laughs> all, all you don't want to do then, I think, for me was I had a comfortable gap on the V50, but the next uh, V50, James Ritchie, who we shared some miles together, and I think I volunteered to help on a Bob Graham round. <laughs> I think so. You know, he's a lovely guy. I wouldn't mind being behind James, but I had a, you know, I think I had a few hours on him, so I didn't have to race uh, that last day, which was I'm super thankful for. Can you imagine if you have to race the last day? 
it all come didn't it with russell did it come down to um the last day i can't remember it, it might not be in the last day yeah but it was still yes yeah, still, still it was still on right okay you've sold it to me gary um, i if i had uh unfortunately that week will never be a week where i can uh leave home for about 10 years but maybe i could be 50 champ one day oh, um yeah. i know lots of people it's a busy time of year with um who've got families of kids going back to school and stuff so it's uh not always easy to leave family that time of year but anyone perhaps who uh, you've inspired which I know oh I've had a couple of messages already saying Gary's inspired me I'm signing up I've had people say they've entered the race because of you uh, and if uh, you'll be oh my god you'll be you'll be starting that race next year <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, right. You're thinking if people are thinking of signing up, just it's just a thing. You know, with these big races, often they just get in. There's a worm, isn't it? Gets in, you know, like I want to do it. I want. I can do. It. Often it's like, oh my god, I can't. I could never do that. And that's what. Well, that's what makes me sign up. Is like I could never <laughs> do that. I'll never do that. And I'm like, right. I need to do it now. Uh, what? Um, what do you think you need to like? Perhaps if you need to have had experience of stuff, or do you reckon if you set this as like a year goal, if you're a you're a runner, you can sort of work towards it. If you if you're based in Wales, then yeah, go go and fill your boots yeah. on those mountains. I, I, we did we did run with a few. I did run with a few like local runners. They were they were doing themselves a disservice. Uh, ben, one guy in particular, he was saying, "Oh yeah, I know the mountains. I know where to push. I know where I can ease off, and then I know where I can make up time." He was just a super strong runner, and he improved day on day. So, but yeah, if you live local, fill fill your booth for, for me. Yeah, serve me well doing races like the old county tops, doing races like teenager double record is I love being a proper dirt bag, and I'll pack a kit and run to a youth hostel, stay the night, so, and use that kit that I'm going to run in again, and then run back the next day. Nice. Things like that. Do your admin. Do your ad. ad honestly, I know people said it. Bev said it. You've just got to, and I don't, I think that's probably what people don't really appreciate how quick time goes. Admin, 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 practice, practice, practice. If you can have the budget, try and buy the lightest kit. And I'd always mean that, you know, lightest sometimes isn't the best. So there's some things you can't scrape on, scrimp on. You, you need a decent waterproof jacket. We didn't, but you might do. So don't go and get some featherlight waterproof jacket, then you're going to be getting hypothermia in the morning. But what I mean by light is kids, see maybe things that are going in your big support bag that you're going to, you're not going to actually carry with you on the mountains. So if you can afford a light sleeping bag, if you can afford a light uh, camping mat, all of that stuff is ace. Practice your nutrition. Practice your nutrition when you are running with poles. Um, yeah, if it wasn't a gel, then I'd have to stop and walk. So there's things like that you really need to improve. I lost 20 minutes of time just faffing in the support points when if I'd have just been actually could tell the time properly, then I would have got out on time. And it did. You know, this this is important. If you are competitive, I lost a position to another runner. So I dropped, basically dropped a place to a Kiwi, Matthew. I didn't mind. He was such an awesome guy. I was great. I was grateful to share some miles with Matt. So, but yeah, he did. He did benefit from, from my faffing. But yeah, that's so things like that. Cut down your fat. Just try and stream. I don't, I mean, it's Ooh, a service in I like that. I like Human that fat. thing. Oh, trim. If you can, let's have that into podcast closing. The closing statement. I wish I could do. You know, if I one thing maybe because I think I'd set the clock to about twenty five minutes for them. But I'd go to the toilet. Maybe the toilet was already had two people in there, so I was waiting. So maybe start your getting out of camp at twenty past instead of twenty five past. That would have been something if I did it again. (laughs) That I do. (laughs) Did you enjoy your celebrity status in camp? Did you feel like you couldn't, you know, you had to slightly put brave face on or... It was a nightmare. Was it it Gary? (laughs) Was it the Gary we know and love that we saw? I loved it. I absolutely... I think we've talked about this. I I would not like being up on the stage. I think you'd enjoy being up on the stage with the mic. Really? No. I... I like, I think I could like mingle. I think I'm a bit of a mingler. I love that. I love being in the community. It is a strange situation to be on. You know, you, you, I, I love it, but you always switched on. And I'm very mindful of representing myself, representing the podcast. I'd, I'd hate, yeah, I'd, I'd hate. 
bad on me, buddy. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would hate anyone to think ill of this podcast because something I did either deliberately or unwittingly. So you are always switched on. I think we were probably trending more than James Wormsley, even though he had he did quite well in a race. <laughs> and I I love meeting our listeners and fingers crossed, you know, we've got a few extra listeners too. I think it makes it all worthwhile. I just was blown away during the week and I kept saying to Brittany, he had no interest whatsoever. Um, I kept being like, this is just so incredible that we have uh, we have built a community and hopefully like you were inspiring, you know, it's just Gary and me, you know, we're just mates. We chat over Zoom about 10 times a week. Uh, uh, but it, we, we it, the whole point of it is to create a platform for uh so that we you know we inspire people that we're just normal and we just love running we yeah. love running love it i love trails love tea we're just normal people we juggle normal stuff highs lows disasters things go well things go really well for you not so well for me this year god damn it um <laughs> my time will come but come no, that's the point of it isn't it and and if we can be a little smidgen no, of- you're at a podium finish a spine race don't uh, that is this year <sighs> okay <laughs> um, you know, if we can be a tiny little bit of a switch of somebody that thinks I can't do that, who's having a rough day, who's anything like that. Um, I just think I can't, I just can't get my head around it that people would, um, so thank you. Thank you to the people that, yeah. that listen and, uh, and Gary, thank you because you, uh, wow, you did that with incredible grace with such resilience you never my god chris i'm not doing that anymore no no <laughs> more videos and i'm not doing this <laughs> you were like you were always upbeat you were always going for it and oh my goodness so proud of you and uh another amazing result and all those rexy miles all those ups and yeah. downs all those gym visits it's not easy. And I think that was good because that came across as well. This, you know, you don't get that sort of stuff. And I think anyone that's done it or tried to do it will go, will often take a step back and go, whoa, that was hard. So we can't be sort of like this. Yeah, what you tough. did was, was really, really tough. And uh, I did need to lean in. You know, I've, I did smile way through, but I did need to lean, in, lean into the teen trail support, all the, on the dragon mail, it was awesome. Did you break the record for the dragon mail? That was ridiculous. It looked like you had a loo roll in your hand. <laughs> so, but Lisa popped a lovely note in my bag, which um I read on the on on the on the Sunday evening. And she get there and Lisa and the she gave me a little four-leaf clover. We found a four-leaf clover when we were out with Rex one day and I'd carried it with me all the way uh all the way on the dragon's back race. And you know, just knowing that everyone was safe at home. Rexy was there, you know, with with family and everyone was safe. It just allowed me to go and uh, fully, fully enjoy, fully enjoy my experience. And it was like I said earlier, it was Lisa's birthday on Monday, so I felt super, super guilty that I was missing it. Did you say uh, there's a cupboard of protein rebel, uh, <laughs> precision hydration, go crazy. Help yourself to it. what's mine is yours. Help yourself. <laughs> But even my children, you know, I I don't think they actually can compute compute what I did. But I hope, I hope it's like you'll feel this too. I hope it's like a, a lesson that even when it's tough, you don't you don't give up. You know, you want you, you you want to show them that you can do things that you don't think you can do. And uh, yeah, even when it's struggling, it's there's still a bit of light sometimes, and you can just you can just keep pushing on. Hopefully, they can identify with that, whatever they choose, whatever their path is, and we can all identify with that. Yeah, never give up. Trim the fat. But I did. I did need to get that four leaf clover out a few times. I'm not going to lie. I've already patched for Totrep my little. Uh, but it's very battered now. My little a picture of the fam and that was found yeah. on Hadrian's wall because that comes with me now. I just need to touch yeah. it. Get the strength, strength of the fan behind you. Right, I want your quick five. These are quite simple because I thought you'd be quite tired. So I'm not going to make these complicated for you. Okay. Uh, favorite day of the race? Two. Quickest the wind. I thought, yes, we can. We we Where can. The... Going from, I, can't, I don't know if I can do this to, yes, we can do this. The dragon started to roar on day two. Yeah. The tail started to come out. Favorite meal? All day six in Cardiff Castle. Enjoyed the um, enjoyed... Of the fact that I've been in <laughs> and I enjoyed uh, the I, I don't really like rhubarb crumble, but I was so famished and empty that went down really, really well. Fave tent mate, 
Oh, Eddie, I'm not answering that one. God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> I have to pause thinking, it's good for you, and he's going to answer. <laughs> Next question. Uh, only one bit of kit you can take. You've got shorts, T-shirt, trainers, one bit of extra kit. What would it be? I'm a stats man, so bring me a watch. Take your watch. Leave your poles, take your watch. I'd still be there if it wasn't for me watch. You can you're uh you can only do one race this year, sadly. Next year, let's say next year, you can only do one race, Lakeland Hundred or Dragon's Back. Which oh, one? you son of a bitch! What answer? Do they? What good question? <laughs> God damn it! Uh, how can you ask me that question? Oh, you want to know? Oh, that's rock on. Who's your favourite? Oh, they're so different. They're so different. I'm chasing the slates. I've got to say the 100, Lake 100. And yet we all knew it. Everybody was like, he's going to say Lake 100. Right. And uh, oh, I dread to think of the pictures you're going to put up. How many pictures are you going to put on that Insta story? I think you put 10, can't you? You're going to be like, <laughs> yeah, you, you can change it every day to get all the pictures up. I did. did you, um, I don't know if you saw it. An artist was on. Oh my God, I saw it, Gary. Everyone saw it. I don't know what happens to that picture, though. Robin, uh, Shane, obviously, she did a lot better than me in the race. Shane had passed, uh, gifted Robin the picture that the artist painted of her. I don't know what the legacy is with the pictures. I'd be really super curious. I don't wow. think anybody really wanted a picture of me. It so... was a very good artistic impression of you as well. She'd definitely <laughs> shaved down those corners of it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'd be curious what happens with those and if there is a chance. It was a to... great picture. That picture was he caught you at Dynamic, um... yeah. <laughs> Just before you went on your bum and went oh. You know when you see sometimes you see pictures of yourself thinking, Oh god. That's oh, every picture I did myself. Okay. <laughs> but I was quite pleased when I saw that picture pop up. <laughs> Uh, what's your music for your Insta story? How are you going to sum up this journey in a few lyrical moments? I have thought about this, and it's got to be Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles. Every day, oh. Here Comes the Sun. That was the tale of the week, and it's well, a wonderful yeah. song. It is a wonderful song. Beatles are wonderful. You're our sunshine. Thanks for making it back in one piece. Thank you for sharing your journey. And now, rest up. You don't need to provide any content for the podcast. I'm going to do all of that in the next okay. week and a half. Yay! <laughs> Put your feet up. Drink. God, let's get more than two cups of tea in. I've got uh, some beer in the fridge. I have some beer. Yay! Buddy, buddy, buddy. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Massive well done, massive well done to everybody who was brave enough to tow that line and whatever journey yeah. that uh, you then went on, um, well done. And to any aspiring dragons, let us know if you're thinking of uh, having a go at that race. I'm sure it's not the end of your relationship with that race, Gary. Go and volunteer. Go and volunteer if you want to immerse yourself in it, 100%. Mm, great idea. Rest up, buddy. Massive well done. And uh, look forward to seeing now. <laughs> I look forward to mocking you now for the next six weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I know we said thanks at the beginning, but I'd just like to reinforce that thank you. It was just an absolute treat from start to finish. I, yeah, totally over exceeded. I'm 100% satisfied. Oh, my favourite part of the show. But actually, I feel a bit down about this week because I thought it was nailed on going to be on the charts. But no. Gary, you don't just feel down. We just had to edit because you just swore that you weren't even <laughs> in the top three. Uh, but yeah, I really thought we'd be in the top three for this one. the nice guy here. <laughs> there was a woman well, yeah. the duck. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, if someone's taking on the juggle, then um, they're definitely going to rack up some serious mileage over the week. And Lee Wingate, yeah, 249 mi 49.6 miles and 89 hours, 43 minutes, and 16 seconds of total exercise. Oh my goodness, me, that is a big week. And Josh Castro Hall, now he did the Dragon's Back race, so I'm not too sure why. He's got more elevation than me, considering the race started on a Monday and finished 
And this Maybe he didn't went acti- on a Sunday. He just he didn't act. He, t- he recorded his stroll back to the car on Saturday and did something Sunday too. But yeah, I saw Josh quite a few times on route, and it was always good. It was always a marker because I don't want to. Kind of, well, I will give this away. People start at different times on the Dragon Pack race for many reasons. They could be chasing cutoffs or they just want to get back to camp a bit earlier. Josh was 14, so he definitely wasn't chasing cutoffs, but I think he then enjoyed the extra maybe 30 minutes in camp. But then I'd get into a checkpoint and I'd see Josh in checkpoint too. So I knew, yeah, my pace is pretty consistent. So it was good. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing Josh out on the route. So yeah, 58,579 feet. Heavy flex, Josh. Well done. Well done. Yeah, we're a little bit late with these results. Apologies, Dale's runner, but we thought, yeah, we'd keep them and read them out on the show still. And it's the DR40 race that was going on. First female, Emma Roper, previous guest of the podcast. That's super well done, Emma. Second was Bronwyn Mayo. And third was Karen Sawood. Well done, everybody. And then the males, Freddie Roden took the win. Ben Hamilton came in second. And Stephen Kirk came in third. Stephen Kirk is a super prolific runner. And I'm pretty sure he runs with a a sooty puppet in his backpack if it's the same guy so if you see someone with a sooty puppet in his backpack pretty sure it's Stephen Kirk and that was also the final of the series the Dales Runner series so Emma Roper yeah she took the overall win for the ladies well done and Helen Nicholson came in uh, first vet with a time of 12 hours and 46 minutes Daniel Walters for the men and the first vet was Sean Davison at the time of 10 hours and 50 I love the scenery that you see and all the photographs for the Dales Runner series I really should next year to the line with some of their races I think they'd be really good build up for the Lakeland 100 just maybe get over Dragon's back first before you start pottering in these races <laughs> it's quite nice actually I'm not thinking about anything else properly just yet Whatever. but yeah well done everybody super impressed this week's Tales from the Trails is from Sarah Whittington hi guys thanks for all the awesome listening and great community vibe I'm the person who is in Qatar more latterly in Granada province Andalusia her hubby and I seem to have an infinite number of Tales from the Trails funny close shaves and strange happenings maybe we're just unlucky or simply darn stupid early December heralds the ultra coaster dill Almeria 75-ish K around the coast of Almeria province it's usually warm and pleasant running conditions. It's like an end of year get together for the great and good of ultras in Andalusia. The route is gentle for these parts, ending with a very flat 20k stretch. We both signed up for the 75k with shoe choice open for debate. The drop bag at 50k allows a change and I decide to run in light trail shoes and light trail shoes. This sounds like a sort of gourmet entree. I decide to run in light trail shoes before swapping to my road shoes for the last 75k, which included the flat roadie boring section. Hubby bravely decided to tackle the whole route in his shiny new peregrines, declaring they were the best shoe for the job. Super light and comfy, fighting talk. Setting off together, I left him behind, as is usual. (laughs) Love it, Sarah. Before receiving a strange WhatsApp from him. The coastal path just before the drop bag point was notoriously technical. The only technical 100 metres of the whole route. The path had started to fall into the sea. Oh, and for 100 metres or so, the smooth, narrow track edged around the cliff on a camber. It's not a place to hang around. You had to be confident in your footing and get it done. Steve Hubby reached the point with one small hanging off like a foot flip-flop, set off round the cliff and got crag fast. Oh, no. He literally could not move on one foot due to the loose sole and was left wedging that foot in a nook to wait for rescue. Thankfully, another runner came after a couple of minutes, managed to shimmy around Steve. It must have been a close body path before pulling him to safety. (gasps) This section of path completely dropped into the sea two winters ago and there's now a forced, safer diversion. Oh, Steve ended up walking into the drop bag point with his flip-flop peregrine sole, contemplated trying to fit his feet into my trail shoes, which were already packed into my bag, before walking around the village and finding a hardware store, which was open and stocked super glue. The kindly shopkeeper helped to do a running repair on his shoe, also giving him some duct tape to help him complete the final 25k. He finally limped into the finish, one of the last runners, sole glued up and duct taped wrapped around his shoe, and that was his end of his love affair with the amazing peregrines they were binned and we've not revisited the brand since i held off sending this until gary was well on his dragon's back way as i knew how much he was looking forward to running in his peregrines and i didn't want to sway his decision granted this happened several models earlier and i'm sure the now 
now the shoes are more durable. Thanks again, Sarah. Oh my goodness, I love this. I love the shopkeeper who glued the shoe together. <laughs> love that he. I love the it. fact he prob- yeah, problem solved. Didn't get timed out either. Awesome. Think I would have chucked my toys out of the pram if my <laughs> shoes fell apart like that. I did think about actually with Dragon's Back Race packing some uh, duct tape. I didn't because of the weight of it. Because cross country. Always around your poles. You put yeah, somewhere around yeah, your poles. Yeah. That's standard issue. Cross country. Just tape your shoes on. Yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. As if Gary needs any more encouragement or ego inflating this week, but let's do it. Let's finish with some five-star reviews. This one starts bloody brilliant. I stumbled upon Gary and Eddie on their previous podcast as I was finding my feet in the running world around 12 months ago. After a brief hiatus, I was really pleased to see them back with their new show and their old humour, insight and general positive spin on ultra running. So many brilliant guests from a variety of backgrounds, even teaching me a little bit about the menopause, which I happily imparted onto my long-suffering wife, although she's a nurse of 20 years and looked at me like I was daft. They gave me insight into all elements of running ultras from eating and hydration to rest and recovery, and I'm pleased to say they have inspired me to keep trying more races from my first 50k in October to the Ring of Fire next week. Oh, yes. Put on. Let us know, Terry, and several more in between. Completed in part to the confidence given by these pair of diamonds Keep Ooh, up i love it work. love it terry send us a message let us know how ring of fire went thank you two exclamation marks the best podcast and smiley face listen to an episode that was hooked from the start so start from the beginning and you kept me going throughout the 12 hour drive back to the uk from the alps i'm now on episode 12 and need another long drive so i can keep binging on the shores exclamation marks <laughs> I tell Bryn about how many people download the podcast each week. He is just like, who wants to listen to you? I have to listen to you all day. That will blow his mind that someone would listen to me for a whole drive. (laughs) Wake up, please. (laughs) It is amazing. It's amazing when we see the download numbers. Carla Tonks, Apple Podcast. Thank Thank you you so much. We're flying, Eddie, this week. We are rattling through the show. I've got a little clock timer going beside me, and it's only about 26 minutes we've been recording. I'll try my best. I both want a cup of tea because we've not recorded your bit yet. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's half past two. It's time for that middle. Salmon lips. It's getting tea. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, well, my goodness me. So your week, obviously, is... This is funny because this show is going to go out after you've done the race We're done so it's all gonna be, it's all messed up but hopefully it's just as good content as always guys but yeah by the time you're listening to this fingers crossed that me and Bryn will safely have arrived in Kamoya got the kids back in time from school and be home and lying having a Netflix binge on Friday I said it, it's actually really nice that the race is on a Tuesday and not at a weekend because then we can have some di- downtime on Friday and then uh, just be with the kids and just chill out at the weekend and get kind of back to back, a bit, bit of sleep, bit of food, and hopefully be moving okay. Back into training on Monday, I said. <laughs> 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 did he swear he, I can't even repeat what he says I can't repeat what he says to me all the time really about this race Chris is going to pop up with his camera ask you some questions oh. <laughs> that would be that would break the internet can you imagine if for the first time Gary just asked if it was okay if I just so I got here I'm quite tired after the great north run <laughs> Yeah. He crushed that too. We we will have talked a little bit about recovery already, but what to Kyle, this how are you gonna manage the emotional loads of this week? I'm not gonna do a thing. It, well it I do need to look at recovery. I think I might need some antibiotics because my feet are not... Rex loves my feet at the moment, more than usual. He is... Oh, no, you must not. No, Gary. <laughs> yeah, it triggers Lisa, so he doesn't get along. He doesn't get along on them. But I need to look at my feet properly and maybe some antibiotics. I've been avoiding the painkillers because I thought this, you know, I put so much in my body last week. Got to come out. 
pin. Yeah, got to got got to rest that uh, side of things and just yeah, embrace the pin. To be honest, from the shins up, I could run. I don't feel too bad at all. What is it, Tim? I can make Saturday the run. I really start to feel some shin pain, and that is just amplified and amplified. The only thing I would say to everybody is, as long as it just gets a little bit better every day. Like a little bit of the swelling goes down. They're not quite as sore, even though they're still really sore, but you sort of move down that pain scale. The body's doing its thing. It's yeah. if it gets, the redness gets worse. But you've already got a bit of colitis in your feet. and They'll be okay. They'll be okay. They're nothing too, I don't think they're too bad really, but nothing really, just catching up with family. I missed them daily last week, you know, and Rex. So that is what I'll be doing this week. No plans. I know I mentioned about Dale's Runner early and now look at that, but uh, no plans this week. Just eating everything, all the food, all the junk. I need to tick a box. I love the yum yums. The uh, It's like a donut, aren't they? Yum yum. I need a yum yum. Nothing, not a sausage. Gary, massive finish off this epic podcast with massive congratulations from me your podcast co-host you handled yourself our little old podcast wow look at the platform that it has become and you you were like a pro i mean you and i we are just we were thrown together out of you know like when superman they go back to what was it, it used to be lewis and clark or something lewis you and clark yeah and he's like just born out of this flash of light. <laughs> and we just started this old this old podcast as a way to encourage other people to get into ultra running, to share ultra running stories. Neither of us have any media training or any sort of um, Goodness me, yeah. training in any <laughs> <laughs> But wow, you were, and you are always the one. I know I'm always the one that I was like, give me the microphone, show me the stage, turn on the spotlight. <laughs> and you're always the one that says, oh, no, I couldn't do that. But wow, you handled yourself with such, as you said. Grace Panache. Uh, uh, with such humility, wow, seeing you around those uh, in all, ju- not just in the bits that Chris recorded, but also in all the Dragons Back Media as well. Just to everybody, I had so many messages saying what a lovely guy you were, how you came across as a lovely guy, but everybody that met you said. And I think that is like such a testimony to um, why our po- people like listening to our podcast is because it's, you're real and you're just a lovely, lovely guy who juggles work family and just goes out and digs deep and shows people what they can do if they if they want to so wow absolutely amazing and you did us basically Stop it. So <laughs> thank you to our pops and patrons we couldn't do this without you uh be kind be kind gary this week to your future self i'll try and be kind to my future self you guys listening be kind to your future selves don't forget to like subscribe follow and give us a share tell your mates tell your running buddies tell everybody just what a legend gary is and uh say hello if you see us on the trails over the weekend Oh, thanks, Eddie. It was a, honestly, it was such a treat to be amongst your people. And yeah, I've said to you before, I couldn't do, I couldn't get up on the stage with the mic. I couldn't be, I couldn't be that person. And I don't think I still could, but I really loved being amongst our group. And um, I really did try and give a bit of myself when I was out there. And I think I held myself well. And um, I just appreciate all the support that we got when I was out there. It was just magic. From start and finish, I really felt it. I really felt it. Yeah, I struggle to put it in a word sometimes because I will probably start crying <laughs> immediately. But I just, yeah, I just want everybody to know. No matter, it could have been just a little chat when we we're washing our dishes, um, or even sit down having a meal or some miles shared on the trails. Every moment went in, and I fully appreciated every every second i loved it i loved it all but yeah best of luck everyone tore on the line and i put best of luck to you and Bryn. but obviously i hope you had a wonderful time and i'm so impressed always impressed with how dedicated you are to your training and i know it's gonna pay off in spades yeah you and Bryn will be done by the time this goes out and i can't wait to see you both crush it and hear all about it next week remind me of the stats again Eddie. come on what is the elevation meters 12,000 12, meters that is super scary because i've been working in feet all week and they're quite big numbers in feet but when you we don't even look at the feet gary let's not go there 12,000 <laughs> sounds okay well i'll be rooting for you and i hope you have the best of times hashtag team sutton listen to your body and your favorite podcast and make sure you refuel with your favorite brew and do be kind of future self. There's a few times I didn't have any one mantra out on that course, but there was definitely a few times where I said to myself, come on, Gary, 
be kind to your future self. And it's so important. It's so important. And paid back in spades. My name is Gary Thwaites. And I'm Eddie Sutton. And that was episode 38 of Tea and Trails. <laughs>